All right, part two. Getting your upper half to work with your lower half. This is like one of the hardest things I have as a coach to be able to, to make it fluid. And again, I wanna talk about this. We're gonna start off with walking with punches. And the patterns that I get when I walk, it's opposite. So I'll do it here just so you can kinda of understand what I mean. When I walk, I've got hundreds of thousands of reps doing this. So my left foot was working with my right foot, right hand's working with my left foot, okay? When I start to walk with punches, again, this is something you need to drill over and over. And every time that you start, it's gonna feel weird. So if you're in a novice level and you're learning how to do this, it's even harder for me to work with a higher level athlete to get their body to do this because it's like relearning, okay? I've gotta be able to have my feet go with my hands, but also, where I'm using my core and my hips and my shoulders are working together. That's where my leverage is, okay? So I want you to think it's very robotic. So when I'm moving my left foot, my left hip, left shoulder are working together, okay? When I'm moving my right foot, my right hip, right shoulder are working together. So I get almost this, this robotic motion. If you're locking your core, it's gonna help you do these. these. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in Justin Gaethje. Okay, I'll have you stand back here towards the logo. He hasn't done these for probably eight years. Because we, again, as we start to do, we do lots of mitt work, lots of one-on-one -on -one stuff, and I'm always having him do challenge his feet. When I see that he's creating a pattern and getting something, I'll challenge it and go into a new footwork. This from fundamental footwork, very, very important. Okay, so I'm gonna have you walk forward towards the camera, and I want you to throw just a basic one-two as you're walking. One, two, good, good, pause. Okay, one thing I don't like, but if you wanna learn it quicker, he's straight up. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this real quick since we're on it. Okay, he's tall like a building, okay? Tall like a building, you fall. You, you, again, we wanna talk about like narrow stance and wide stance. A lot of people are like, when I first started fighting, I was like wide base and I was like, oh, it just feels better, I can throw harder shots but you get stuck, okay? So the benefits of being wide stance is naturally you can dig off the ground. You're fighting out of, out of the sand. You've got a good base, except for when you've got a world champion strength that gets a coach, okay? So I got this wide base, I can tussle. I'm very strong in this position, okay? But I'm stuck. If I go to throw a right hand, I end up pulling with my shoulders to get out of there because I got these wide feet, okay? Narrow stance. What's nice about a narrow stance is I can take huge steps. I can close the gap. I can move. Okay, what's bad about being narrow is when I get hit, I tilt. Okay, I got no anchors out, I got no base out. Okay, so it's very easy to, to tilt. So we wanna be able to have the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna have you start back again. Okay, normal stance, okay. And notice he's got his legs bent. I'm gonna talk about this real quick too. Don't be too front heavy, don't be too rear heavy, okay. Balance, weight on both knees. Both knees are grabbing the ground together. Okay, so start with the one twos. Good, good. Again, nonstop. A one, two, yep. This looks really good. I am thoroughly impressed. Eight years since we've done this.